What up, it's Brock. Welcome back to the channel. This is the first video of 2024. So I'm glad that you're here. I'm excited about this one. This is a behind the scenes of a recent project that I was really proud of, really loved the way it turned out. It was really cool for me to do. And I can't wait to explain all the details to you. So the coolest part about this project was being able to work with my dad. He was the guy in the film, working on the lathe, making the candlestick. He's been a carpenter, a woodworker my entire life. He's super, super talented, makes a ton of custom furniture. He can build custom homes. He built the house that my parents live in. He's just really talented. So it's all always cool to be able to work with him and uh, film some of the stuff that he actually creates. Now, when it comes to the production itself, we shot it on the Canon C70 with the Sigma Art 35 millimeter lens and the Canon EF85 F1.4, the old EF, the old trusty EF, my favorite 85 millimeter lens. So those are the only two lenses we used. We used the Dana Dolly and I had someone pulling focus. My friend Mikhail was kind of the AC on the set. He kind of helped me with lighting and then was able to also um, pull focus while I manned and moved the camera. So it was a kind of a two man crew, but it worked super well. So my dad's been expanding his shop at his house and he's doing this extension and he was in progress of building it. The walls were up, the rafters were up, but he hadn't put the batten strips on the outer walls yet. So there was still cracks in between each big panel on the walls. And I had the idea before you finish this to let's blow a light like a 600D, 1200D or something that powerful through it at night we will haze up the inner part. And then hopefully we'll get these beams of light kind of coming through the cracks. My friend Mikhail was able to get a 600D. So we threw that outside wide open and we weren't getting as strong of beams as I really wanted. You could only see them if you were pretty much looking directly at the wall, as opposed to some of these side angles we were getting. We weren't getting them, but it was okay because we were able to subtly use them in certain shots and certain angles and be strategic about it. I think overall it probably ended up better that it wasn't like an overused kind of constant thing, but I think the lighting turned out pretty cool in this project. So our key lights on this project was the Aperture 300D. And then we also had an F22 kind of wrapping the key around a little bit more. We were shooting through a four x four magic cloth. And then we also add an extra layer of diffusion with a two stop uh, impact little flag as well to kind of soften it and make it look a little bit more natural. We didn't want it to feel super sourcey, even though stuff like this, it, it was gonna feel sourcey to some degree, but we wanted to minimize that as much as possible and still keep a natural feel. There are moments where you can kind of tell, but for the most part, I think we accomplished that with given the gear and the time restraints that we had and the equipment we had access to. I think it turned out really cool. And then honestly, we didn't even really use a fill. The fill was all almost the light coming through the cracks. Um, I wanted to be a little bit more dramatic. So we kind of wrap the F22 around a little bit to kind of give us a little bit of a fill. So, so far we have the Aperture 300D and the F22 as our key lights. And then we also had the 600D outside blasting that wall. And the only other light that we used on this project was my Nanlite 300B kind of in the background, hitting the wall, hitting the floor a little bit, warming that up as it's a bicolor light and just giving some interest, a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture in the background. We actually mounted it to the scaffolding with a super clamp from Impact. Those things are amazingly useful by the way if you don't have one i encourage you to get some they're great they're a little bit pricey but they're worth it because you can use them for all different types of things they're super awesome so that's pretty much all the lighting that we use on this project and then from there we just basically played around and got different shots of the progress of him making the candlestick turning from this old kind of rundown gross looking weathered looking log to ultimately this beautiful candlestick, the idea of that transformation. That's what I was trying to capture. That was the story we were trying to tell was from start to finish of that entire project and how fast something can be restored to beauty and repurposed into something that's that's intentional and it's, it's art and it's beautiful. And so that was kind of the story, the narrative we were trying to tell with this piece. So in terms of storyboarding and scripting this, I just knew that I wanted to tell that story. And so I started with this initial shot that I knew I wanted to get of him going to kind of a wood pile out back kind of looking around, grabbing the, the piece that we were gonna use and then kind of walk into the shop. And then from there, we would kind of end up in this shop environment, this more warm kind of solid dust flying, rustic kind of vibe. Um, but I knew I wanted to start at this wood pile. So that's what we did. We took the Dana Dolly down there and I actually used the wheelbarrow. You can kind of see this like ring in the first shot. Um, I use that as just some foreground interest when you're using something like a like a Dana Dolly or any kind of dolly where you're pushing in or pulling out. Sometimes it's nice to have some foreground interest. It's great to make your image a little bit more dynamic, have a little bit more depth. So I was kind of shooting through that wheelbarrow just to give some more interest. And then ultimately, this is a really simple shot. It was just a classic push in and come up, grab, boom, and get out of there. So that was shot one. And then from that point on, we basically moved to the shop and everything else was filmed in there. So I knew going into this project, we were using the lathe, which was the tool that spins the wood and you kind of carve against it as it's spinning. You could turn a square piece of wood into something round and create table legs, um, different things like that. In this case, a candlestick. I knew I wanted this dramatic kind of elegance of the piece being created, almost like this elegant art piece 
mixed with the rough and grungy and dirtiness of just sawdust and wood and all that kind of thing. So I thought it was going to be really cool to shoot in slow-mo for this one. I didn't do 120. I just kind of stuck with 60 because I didn't want it to be too slow, but I wanted it to feel a little bit different than just washing it in normal speed. So we went with 4K 60 on pretty much every shot except for the very first one and some of the initial setup shots. Those were shot at 24, but the rest of them were all shot at 60. And I'm glad I did that because it, it was exactly what I ended up using was mostly the slow-mo stuff. Now, a lot of this was just using the Dana Dolly, rearranging it, pointing it in different directions, getting different slide pans. And then I would pull off the camera, do some handheld stuff as well, just because some of the angles you wanted to get, you couldn't really get with the Dana Dolly. So for speed purposes and efficiency, it was just easier to get some handheld shots. So that's what you're seeing. You're seeing a mixture of handheld and Dana Dolly shots. That was really nothing else to use, no gimbals or anything like that. Uh, like I said, my friend Kale was pulling focus. So I could focus on getting the composition that I wanted while he was more focused on actually, you know, pulling sharps, getting sharp images and making sure that everything was nice and in focus. And I was kind of mean to him a little bit. We were shooting at like F14, F12, because um, I had the speed booster on the C70. So it was really, really hard stuff to pull focus on, but he did a great job. Really, really pleased with how that turned out. As like most of my projects, this wasn't super high budget. It was kind of last minute. I do a lot of things last minute. I'm working on that. This new goals for this year be more ahead, more planned out, but it was very last minute in the sense that we didn't have a ton of time to shoot. And on top of it being last minute, we were honestly all just freezing because I wanted to shoot this at night and it was like just over 30 degrees. So it was really cold. Our hands were dying. Um, so we did this in probably two and a half hours total from setup to actually shooting and getting the project done. And he was able to make the, the candlestick that fast. I think it turned out great considering the constraints and the limitations that we had. Um, I think it looks pretty, pretty good if I'm being honest. Now, when it comes to the grade on this project, I knew going into it that I was gonna probably lean warm. I wanted to kind of go dramatic, high contrast, elegance, kind of this high key, but still dramatic look. And uh, I think it really came out well. And I knew on this one that I wanted to do some film emulation. So I went to Dehancer and uh, used some of their stuff there. I don't use that stuff often, but it was really cool to use on this project. I thought it was perfect. I thought it turned out really, really good. So I had a combination of my own conversion LUTs on it mixed with my adjustment layer LUTs. And then on top of all of that, I threw in some film emulation, some film grain, very subtly, but it just kind of added some some warmth to the image. It added some uh, character to it, and I think it turned out really good. I was really happy with the grade on this project. Now, when I look at the final edit, I think there were some shots that could have been lit better. We probably could have been a little bit more patient and relit some situations when I moved angles. But overall, I was really proud of it. I think it turned out good. And again, the C70 just continues to blow my mind with just the beautiful cinematic images this thing produces on just normal photography glass. It's pretty wild. I had no diffusion on this project, didn't use any filters. Nothing like that, just used the C70 and the art glass and the uh, Canon EF glass, and that was it. And it, I think it turned out pretty sick. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. But yeah, that's pretty much this project. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are on my first shoot of 2024. And if you're new here, if you like filmmaking and you like kind of run and gun stuff, you like gear reviews, you like all those things, hit that subscribe button, follow me on social media, all those things, and let me know that you're here in the comments. I wanna hear from you. I love meeting you guys, talking to you guys. So let me know your thoughts on this project. And yeah, I got a lot of videos planned for this year. I'm really excited. Excited. A lot more content coming because I have a lot more shoots outside of here that I'm able to do some BTS on and really kind of give you guys an inside look as to what it's like to be an independent filmmaker who doesn't always work with huge crews, who has kind of more broken down, run and gun type productions that are really accessible, and really uh, attainable for everybody to pull off. And so I'm excited about this year. I can't wait to kind of bring you guys in on all these different projects. But that's all I got for you today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.